hypothyroidism is defined as a clinical state of excess thyroid hormone due to excess production and secretion by the thyroid gland. This is sometimes confused with the term thyrotoxicosis, which is the clinical state of excess thyroid hormone for any reason. Normally, the hormones produced by the thyroid include about 80% thyroxine, also known as T4, and to a lesser extent, triiodothyronine, T3, with T4 being converted to the more active T3 at the tissues. This has many effects throughout the body, mostly acting via nuclear receptors in target tissues, and primarily affecting metabolic pathways, such as basal metabolic rate, thermogenesis, protein synthesis, lipid and carbohydrate metabolism, as well as a permissive effect on catecholamines, as it increases beta receptor expression which can lead to increased heart rate and stroke volume. The thyroid produces these hormones in response to thyroid stimulating hormone, TSH, which is produced by the anterior pituitary gland. TSH is released by the pituitary gland when stimulated by thyrotropin releasing hormone, TRH, coming from the hypothalamus. This chain forms the hypothalamic pituitary thyroid axis that forms the basis of control of thyroid levels, with T3 and T4 having a negative feedback loop where they inhibit the release of TSH and TRH. The most common cause of hyperthyroidism in iodine sufficient areas is Graves' disease, an autoimmune condition characterized by anti TSH receptor antibodies. These antibodies bind to TSH receptors on the thyroid gland and stimulate it to produce thyroid hormone. There are also TSH receptors in other sites, including in the skin and retrobulbar spaces, and the TSH receptor antibodies are also thought to bind and activate these receptors on orbital fibroblasts leading to production of glycosaminoglycans which can trigger fluid accumulation and fat expansion, giving the classic ophthalmopathy seen in Graves' disease. This is termed infiltrative ophthalmopathy, and presence of hypothyroidism alongside this or infiltrative dermopathy, like myxedema, is enough to diagnose Graves' disease. It is most common between the ages of 30 and 50, and is six times more common in females than in males. This may be because of its autoimmune nature, and it also tends to be associated with other autoimmune conditions like type 1 diabetes and Addison's disease. Toxic nodular goiters, either solitary or multinodular, is when there are nodules in the thyroid that are active and secreting thyroid hormone, and can result from gene mutations in TSH receptor pathways. Unlike Graves, there are no circulating antibodies and the onset tends to be more gradual. Viral infections can lead to inflammation of the thyroid gland, causing a transient increase in thyroid hormone production, termed de Quervain's thyroiditis, typically featuring a painful lump in the neck. Additionally, in the early stages of Hashimoto's thyroiditis, there can be an initial release of stored thyroid hormone leading to thyrotoxicosis before ultimately destruction of enough thyroid cells to cause hypothyroidism. Excess iodine allows the thyroid gland to produce more hormone, for example contrast media, and amiodarone also contains iodine and can lead to hypothyroidism, but due to its cytotoxic effect on thyroid cells, can also cause hypothyroidism. Excess thyroid hormone replacement with levothyroxine can be a cause of thyrotoxicosis. As human chorionic gonadotropin, HCG, is similar in structure to TSH, it can cross-react with TSH receptors when found in large quantities, such as during molar pregnancies. In rarer cases, 
hypothyroidism may be caused by excessive secretion of thyroid-stimulating hormone, most commonly from a pituitary adenoma. Symptoms of excess thyroid hormone generally follow the theme of speeding up. This can include weight loss, heat intolerance, diarrhea or increased bowel movement frequency, tremor, palpitations, and mental health changes, particularly anxiety and irritability. Moist or velvety skin is another manifestation. In Graves' disease, there may be infiltrative ophthalmopathy, as we mentioned, seen in 25% of patients with Graves' disease. This can include eyelid retraction, exophthalmos, meaning protrusion of the eyeball, optic neuropathy, or even involvement of the extraocular muscles, which could manifest as diplopia, meaning double vision. Infiltrative dermopathy features non-pitting edema in the pretibial region, called pretibial myxedema, and is also a finding suggestive of Graves' disease. Thyroid storm is a rare but important manifestation, also known as thyrotoxic crisis. It's a life-threatening emergency characterized by a sudden and extreme excess of thyroid hormone, often precipitated by infection or trauma like surgery. This can result in cardiovascular collapse and shock, and features include hypothermia, mental status changes such as psychosis, as well as extreme agitation. Diagnosis involves lab tests including TSH, which is typically low unless the hyperthyroidism is due to a TSH secreting source. Levels below 0.1 million international units per litre are associated with atrial fibrillation, reduced bone mineral density, and increased mortality. Free T4 and T3 levels are typically elevated, though subclinical cases may have normal thyroid hormones. This is much less common than subclinical hypothyroidism. Graves' disease is positive for anti-TSH receptor antibodies in around 90% of cases, and may also be positive for thyroid peroxidase, anti-TPO, seen in 70% of cases, or thyroglobulin antibodies, anti-TTG, though generally these two are not involved in the pathophysiology of Graves. Thyroid shintigraphy, also known as a thyroid scan, uses radioactive iodine-123 or technetium-99 to demonstrate the distribution pattern of the radioactive tracer, with diffuse uptake seen in graves and patchy, more focal uptake suggesting toxic multinodular goiter. Little uptake is suggestive of thyroiditis or excess exogenous replacement. Thyroid ultrasound is not routinely done, but is done if a nodule is palpable in the thyroid or is found on shintigraphy. Symptomatic treatment includes the use of medications like beta blockers, for example propranolol, typically in the early stages until more definitive treatment is achieved. These help counteract the adrenergic symptoms such as palpitations and tachycardia and tremor. Hypothyroidism can be treated with antithyroid medication radioactive iodine, or surgery, with different options being used in different situations. Antithyroid medications are used over a longer period of 12 to 18 months in an attempt to control the hyperthyroidism, with an expectation that the autoimmune process will remit over this period. Examples include cabimazole, or its main metabolite, methimazole. Another is propylthiouracil. A side effect of these to be aware of is agranulocytosis, meaning a low level of white blood cells, particularly lymphocytes and monocytes. In the UK, a method called block and replace is commonly used, where the excess thyroid activity is blocked using antithyroid medication and is replaced by exogenous thyroid hormone like levothyroxine. Radioactive iodine I131 involves taking advantage of the thyroid's ability to uptake iodine, to deliver radioactivity to those cells and destroy them, as such reducing production of thyroid hormone from the gland. This is often a first-line option in the UK and US for hyperthyroidism and is a definitive treatment in Graves' 
and multinodular goiter. Side effects include permanent hypothyroidism and should not be used in pregnancy. Surgical options are more commonly employed in those with large goiters, a suspicion of malignancy, planning pregnancy, and in those with ophthalmopathy, as radioactive iodine has been found to exacerbate this. Patients are treated before surgery with antithyroid medication to achieve euthyroidism. Risks can include vocal cord paralysis and hypoparathyroidism. In those with TSH levels persistently below 0.1 million international units per litre with subclinical hypothyroidism, treatment is recommended if they are over 65, postmenopausal females at risk of osteoporosis, and those with cardiac disease or risk factors. Ophthalmopathy treatment may involve corticosteroids, but in some cases may require orbital radiation and surgery. In moderate or severe cases, teprotumumab, an insulin-like growth factor 1 receptor inhibitor, is an option. Infiltrative dermopathy may respond to topical or intralesional injections of corticosteroids, and compression stockings may also help.